being in radio, this is an exciting uh, time for me to have these folks here visiting, and we want to introduce you right off the bat to some folks that are here. We'll start right over here. You are? Uh, Chuck Savos. Chuck Savos. And Amy? Amy Nolten-Smyers. All right. And Ron Fredrickson, Dr. Ron Fredrickson, are here. And when we come back here in just a moment after what you're about to see, we'll tell you a little bit about this and why they're here. But right now, Ron, help us out. What are we going to see here from the <laughs> golden, from the voice of the prairie area? Uh, well, we're going to see, uh, you mean the scene we're talking yeah, what, about what are here? We looking at here? <laughs> We've got uh, a farmer by the name of David Quinn, yes. who uh, has decided to become a radio storyteller. And there is this uh, girl named Susie, mm -hmm. who is very sweet on him. He has just got th gotten through telling some stories on radio, and she is really kind of after him. She's know? kind of like a groupie, yeah. like an early age groupie. <laughs> yeah, right. She doesn't like her his wheeler dealer agent, but she likes him. And so mm -hmm. she kind of seeks him out. He goes outside to kind of cool off. And, and she goes and seeks him out and, and asks him a little bit about the stories he's telling about, uh, on radio about his old traveling companion, Frankie. Now, the scene is set in the early days of radio, yes, somewhere the in the prairie. Yeah, it happens in 1923, mm -hmm. and it happens in the Midwest, and... Uh, Maybe in uh, Possibly. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, uh, later in the scene, they mentioned KFKB, which was the old Kansas, old station, first <laughs> Kansas best, you know. It became uh, uh, KFBI later. Yeah. <laughs> and part of the play even takes place mm -hmm. in the Muleback Hotel in Kansas City, All so... Right. Uh, uh, but that's that's the scene we're going to see, and she approaches him and and asks him about his storytelling, and uh, comes on to him a little strong, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's not having any of that. But uh, it's a it's a lovely scene. Join us now, ladies and gentlemen, as we take you back to the golden age of radio. Are you being crazy now? <laughs> Mr. Schwab told me that the stories make you crazy. Well, maybe you want to be alone now, you know, to calm down. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, here, have a piece of ground. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is Frankie the blind girl a true person? Oh, I know. That's a dumb question. Patty, that's my fiance. He told me I should write everything down and show it to him before I talk. He makes me mad. It's not a dumb question. Yep. She's a true person. I bet she was wonderful. Oh, she was. She's so wonderful, I'm not even sure she's real. All these stories, I don't know where it all comes from. <laughs> Scares me. <laughs> Mr. Schwab told me you don't make the stories up. Oh, you're just sitting in front of the... The, the, uh, the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> and out they come. It must be scary. Like dreaming. <laughs> I always pretend I'm talking to Frankie. Even when I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it rains, Frankie. Boy, I sure need a bath, eh, Frankie? Oh, that's so romantic. I'm a very romantic person myself. Teddy's not. Is she dead? I don't know. She just disappeared. I mean, one minute she was there, and then... Oh, then you know. We were eating watermelon one time, and, and Frankie was stuffing red watermelon really? meat into her mouth by the fistful. <laughs> I can still see her. The juice was running down her chin. <laughs> we, we were always so hungry. That's right. <laughs> and then I, uh, <laughs> I licked the juice off her chin. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> Do I remind you of her? Uh, what happened after you licked the juice off of Frankie's face? A man locked me in a shed for a week. I never saw her again. She just disappeared. Oh, Davy Quinn, that's so tragic. Yeah. Well, don't be sad. Frankie loves you. <laughs> My very own Davy Quinn story. Oh, I'll never forget it. Uh, hey, uh, Susie, uh, I've got to stop this. No, don't stop. Oh, Davy, you've got to tell the whole world about Frankie. Oh, Davy. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, now that is what you've just seen as a scene from this production, The Voice of the Prairie, which is done by the folks over at uh, Emporia State University. And uh, joining us, as we said earlier, Dr. Ron Fredrickson, who you may remember as the voice of the Hortons commercials. Who were our two <laughs> actors that we just saw? Yeah. Uh, we saw Robert Berry as uh -huh. David Quinn uh -huh. and Liz Hilt as and Susie. And they're now joining us here on the set. <laughs> Susie and Robert, it's nice to, or Lynn, nice to have you both here. <laughs> David and Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, yeah. And Liz, yeah. Right. Uh, you might, there's a microphone laying there that you guys might want to strap on or down there somewhere. They got theirs on. Okay, good. Uh, okay, let's, let, there's, we'll let get you caught up here a couple of things. The reason we had these folks on today, a couple of reasons. One, they're having a performance we're going to tell you about in a moment. But the reason they're having a performance is something even more exciting, and that is that you have won the American College Theater Festival or Festival yeah. we're, Competition. We're, we're, one of, uh, we're one of six plays in the country that are being sent to be showcased at the Kennedy Center for the American College Theater Festival. What a deal. Uh, now, the original uh, number of plays that entered the festival were about 830. Um, of those 830, something over half were vying for an opportunity to go to regional competitions and then hopefully going on to the Kennedy Center. Um, we went to Minneapolis in January and uh, competed with uh, five other plays from uh, an eight-state region here in the Midwest and uh, turned out to be the one picked from our region to go to, go to the Kennedy Center. There are uh, five other plays, uh, two, uh, two from Cal State Fullerton, one from uh, Fresno, mm -hmm. uh, one from uh, Rochester College, Oakland College in Rochester, Mi Michigan, and another one from Virginia Polytechnic. And uh, so uh, we're representing Kansas, and we're representing the whole mid Midwestern well, region. That is such a so. neat deal, though, for all of those people to be competing. You guys to be one of six that are chosen total, or uh, five. Uh, one of one of six, actually. One of six. Five schools, but six plays. Okay, right. now, and we want to get this point across too. You're having a benefit performance on, I believe, April the fifteenth. That's right. Is it in Emporia? In Emporia. It's in Emporia at, at the, the Bruder University. Theater at 8 o'clock on the 15th, IRS Day. All uh, proceeds go to uh, help you get to help, to help us get to the Kennedy Center. Okay. I might say that the box office opened yesterday and ticket sales were really brisk. So if anyone wants to see it, they probably ought to call the, the box office pretty quickly. Charles, I've, I've heard about this play for a long, long time. It, it, it is a marvelous play. It talks about the golden age of radio, but develops characters, and, and a lot of folks that used to listen to radio, I guess, will get a lot of really neat memories from it. Tell us a little bit about the play itself. Well, it's, uh, it's set uh, against the background of, uh, of the early days of radio, and the character that, that I play and that Robert plays, uh, it's David <laughs> Quinn. He becomes a storyteller on radio, and he relates stories about when he was younger, and he used to travel around with uh, an old uh, Irish codger named uh, Poppy, and he meets a, a blind girl uh, named Frankie, who played uh, played by Amy. By Amy, mm -hmm. and uh, then when she grows up, it's played by <laughs> Liz Hilt. And uh, so basically, it's kind of it's kind of a love story, uh, sentimental love story set against this uh, this backdrop. We also have uh, a couple other characters, um, uh, a Wheeler dealer from New York who gets David to be on radio, who's played by uh, Peter Bastian. Kind of an agent. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, in a way, and then a snake oil salesman, <laughs> <laughs> and then a, kind of a we have a Greg Costler. He plays kind of a he's a jack of all trades. He plays uh, <laughs> several characters, a watermelon man, who, and uh, a preacher named James who is uh, interested in Frankie once she has grown up and become Francis. And you say he plays several characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and the pre-show uh, warm-up that I read said that a couple of you guys are playing several characters. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're doing dual right. roles. As, as a matter of fact, uh, Liz plays Susie in this scene, uh -huh. but her major character is Francis, the grown-up Frankie. What we have, mm -hmm. uh, what, who you have sitting here, <laughs> is uh, two versions of each, each of the main characters. You have David Quinn played by Robert Berry, yeah. his younger self, uh, Davy is played by Chuck Savo. Oh, I see. You have Francis Reed played by Liz Hill, <laughs> and, and young Frankie played by Amy Nolsensmeyer. And so this play transcends several years, I guess. Yes, that's right. It jumps back uh, between yeah. 1895 and 1923. Oh. Flashbacks back and forth. And, what and Liz plays Susie uh, just briefly. She oh. plays two characters in the, in the play, and of course Susie is a whole lot different than oh, yeah. <laughs> the 
blind school teacher, Francis Reed. Now, I'm told in the competition, if you all arrived and were set up and ready to go within a matter of, what, two or three hours or four hours, and, and they were impressed also by the fact yeah. that you could do that? Yeah, they, they were impressed by our load-in. We almost won uh, the Silver Dolly Award for our load-in. <laughs> was that on purpose? Or was that kind of an unplanned uh, arrival? <laughs> Actually, uh, University of Missouri at Columbia run, won that award for, for the third straight year, but they told us that we were uh, we were right up there in the and that's something good. That's how you yeah, they judge it takes not only do they and, uh, they judge the uh, the performance itself, but they judge uh, the load in and the technical aspects of the play. Amy, give me a couple of your favorite lines from the play. We didn't get to <laughs> <laughs> call it up here because I know you know this. You know. <laughs> um, probably one of my favorite scenes is um, when Frank and Davy are traveling around. Yeah. She's walking around by herself and she finds the edge of this cliff. She's blind. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 She can, she feels it with her foot and stuff. And then Davy comes up and, and she's trying to get him to talk and stuff. And he's trying to get her away from the cliff and hold on to her and everything. <laughs> and she's talking. And it's a really neat scene because when you have the music and everything all set up, mm -hmm. it, it sets up a nice little spot. And um, she talks about, um, going up into the clouds and she's like davy tell me a story take us into the clouds come on and he's holding on to the stream well what kinds of uh, i mean you all have to have an immense amount of pride to have been selected mm. for your performance uh, this play, I, I believe, has been done before by other people, and it didn't. Uh, yes, it has. So it isn't the play; it's it, got to be the it, execution. The play was written by John Olive, uh, and incidentally, my understanding is that the uh, John Olive play uh, went to the Kennedy Center last year too. Mm -hmm. So John Olive, the playwright from St. Paul, has done uh, has done very well by the American College Theater Festival, and uh, so uh, we're. Uh, it's a play that uh, that I didn't know anything of, about until Harry Parker, uh, our director of theater at Emporia State, uh, showed it to me and suggested that this might be a good one. Um, and uh, we, we really took to it right away. The scene designer, uh, Ron Folks, um, uh, initially just reading the play on the page, he didn't like it very well. Yeah. But uh, once we got working <laughs> on it, he was the one who said, this play is going to go places, you know? <laughs> And then the, the costume designer, Sue J. Mai, she, uh, she was always very excited about the play. It's been a great ensemble experience for all of us. Uh, the cast has got along, the, the crew has go, uh, got along very well, and... Uh, all of you are going to be professional actors when this is over, right? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that your, is it really, is that your ambition? Yes, yes. I'm, I am officially graduated from ESU. I graduated in December. And uh, now I have I have some work lined out for the summer and fall so far. So, so if anybody's interested, he's uh yes, he's available. We've got work for an actor. We got an actor. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Charles? Well, yeah, I, I'm kind of in between of knowing what I want to do. Sort of searching for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> but I figure I've got probably a couple more years left in school. So. Amy. Same thing. I definitely want to be a professional actress. So. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> you know the trade. So. Yeah. How about you, man? Liz. <laughs> Liz. <laughs> I told you I'd do that for the day was over. <laughs> Liz, thank you. <laughs> I'm also aspiring to become an actress. I see. How about yeah. this old director over here? Is he going to keep doing this from now on? Or this guy used to do the Hortons commercials here in the Wichita area. That's right. <laughs> well, I've I've been uh, I moved to uh, Emporia, Kansas, from Salt Lake City 20 years ago mm -hmm. for a couple of years, <laughs> and it's been funny. And uh, I've I've directed a lot of plays there. I acted in some of them. And uh, I'm going to keep teaching performance and directing plays at Emporia State for the next few years anyway. Wonderful. Well, i got to tell you again, not only for the folks in Emporia, who I know are very proud of your accomplishments, but for the whole state of Kansas, this is a real honor. We're going to be pulling for you at Kennedy. Do you win? You have a chance to win that as competition? A as a matter of fact, when we go to the Kennedy Center, we have already won. We've already All won. six plays are just showcased I there. See. The competition is at an end. I might mention that Robert Berry last year won an audition 
competition. And so this is his second year in a row to so be a Kennedy Center. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving everyone pointers on this. Relax, stage. be cool, don't worry about it. I've been here before, it's no problem. Got everything right. under control. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll urge you again now. The show that we're talking about that will help raise money for these youngsters to get up to uh, the Kennedy Center is April the 16th. It's at 8 p.m. It'll be at the Emporia, what, the Bruder Theater? April 15th. April 15th, excuse me. April. 8 p.m. in the Bruder Theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're and invited, that, and the tickets are real reasonable. Yeah, they are. They're uh, they're five dollars general admission, and uh, students get a kind of a break. That's but, a steal. Uh, That's a yeah. steal. And they're going like hotcakes on a cold Sunday morning. So get up there and get your. <laughs> thank you all very much for coming and sharing your talent. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. And as they say, break away. <laughs> thank you. We'll be right back.